students so we were discussing about bearing capacitive soil okay uh, so last class we have uh, studied some terminologies related to soil bearing capacity so i am going to summarize uh, summarize that portion again so the criteria for finding bearing capacity is shear failure criteria and settlement criteria that is for designing a foundation the uh, footing should not fail under shear and the settlement should be within permissible limit okay so bearing capacity is uh, one of the most important property because it is the load carrying capacity of foundation strata which enables it to uh, bear and transmit loads from a superstructure so uh, based on this bearing capacity the uh, foundation is able to transfer the load from the superstructure and the definitions first one is ultimate bearing capacity represented by qu so ultimate bearing capacity means is the maximum gross intensity of loading which a foundation can withstand without occurrence of shear failure okay that is ultimate bearing capacity and net ultimate bearing capacity qnu is the maximum net intensity of loading at the base of the foundation that the soil can support without occurring shear failure okay and it is obtained by uh, um, uh, reducing uh, overburden pressure from ultimate bearing capacity so qn is equal to qu minus gamma df okay next is net safe bearing capacity so it is a maximum net intensity of loading that the soil can safely support without the risk of shear failure since it is a net safe bearing capacity uh, we have to introduce a uh, factor of safety so qns is equal to qnu divided by factor of safety and this factor of safety is usually between 2.5 to 3 okay next is gross safe bearing capacity represented by qs and it is the maximum gross intensity of loading that the soil can safely support without the risk of shear failure and it is uh, is equal to qn qs is equal to qns plus qns this is qns qns plus gamma df okay qns is equal to qnu by factor of safety so qs is equal to qns plus gamma df that is we have added this overburden pressure since it is gross safe bearing capacity the next is net safe settlement pressure this is a net pressure which the soil can carry without exceeding allowable settlement this is in terms of settlement okay then last definition is net allowable bearing pressure which is represented by qna okay and it is the net pressure at which the soil neither fails in shear nor undergoes excessive settlement okay and this is used for design purpose so net allowable bearing pressure means it is the net pressure at which the soil neither fails in shear nor undergo excessive settlement that is uh, it is uh, it uh, follows the criteria for designing foundation that is the foundation should not fail under uh, shear and the settlement should be within permissible limit so based on these criteria uh, the bearing pressure is net allowable bearing pressure qna so it is used for uh, design of foundation and this uh, this net uh, bearing pressure that is net allowable bearing pressure qna is the smaller of qns and qnp qns and qnp uh, so the smaller value of qns or qnp is qna allowable bearing pressure okay so these are the some definitions that we have studied in our last lecture next uh, in today's class we have dis uh, we have we can study about different types of shear failure okay then basic basic uh, scientist basic uh, classified shear failure of soil into three different types that is general shear failure local shear failure and punching shear failure so these are the different types of shear failure which is occurring on soil the, that is uh, general shear failure local shear failure and punching shear failure so we can discuss one by one uh, so this is the uh, different types of bearing capacity failure that is uh, general shear failure it is the most common type of shear failure general shear failure is the most common type of shear failure that is uh, uh, due to excessive load the soil will fail so this is the mode of general shear failure this is the footing and this is the failed surface and uh, uh, second one is local shear failure it is intermediate between general and this last one punching okay so this is local shear failure and punching it occurs in very loose sand very or in very uh, weak clays it occurs that is punching shear failure so from this figure it is clear that this general shear failure usually occurs uh, 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 at the ground level itself okay, that is uh, just below the ground level this fail occurs and this local shear fail occurs uh, for somewhat depth uh, below the ground level okay 
and this punching is uh, all, is very far from the ground level okay so we can discuss in detail first one general shear failure and this usually occurs for uh, dense sand and stiff clays that is uh, dense sand with relative density greater than 70 percentage and also in stiff clays this type of general shear failure occurs here the load settlement curve in case of footing resting on surface of dense sand or stiff clay shows pronounced peak and failure occurs at very small strain that is with for a very uh, small values of uh, strain the failure occurs so this is the uh, variation of uh, general shear failure and it occurs for dense sand and uh, uh, stiff clays okay and the loaded base on such soil sinks or tilts suddenly into the ground showing surface heaps of adjoining soil that is uh, this is the failure surface so this is the footing and this is the failure surface created on the soil and here a triangular wedge shaped zone of soil that is zone 1 this marked as zone 1 is pushed down and due to this pushing process it in turn presses the sons 2 this is on 2 and on 3 sideways and then upwards okay that is uh, i will explain once more a triangular wedge shaped son of soil that is son 1 is pushed down and in turn it presses the son 1 and uh, son 2 and 3 sideways and then upwards okay so this is the type of failure in general shear failure that is these three sons that is son 1 son 2 and son 3 are clearly visible in the case of general shear failure okay and at the ultimate pressure QU, the soil passes into state of plastic equilibrium and failure occurs by sliding. Okay. Uh, and I have explained that this, uh, this occurs in dense sand with relative density greater than 70% and in stiff clays. Okay. So, this is general shear failure. The shearing strength is fully mobilized all along the slip surface and hence failure planes are well defined. That is the three zones are well defined here. Zone 1, Zone 2 and Zone 3. And the failure occurs at a very small vertical strains accompanied by large lateral strains. So, within uh, small values, uh, uh, failure occurs. So, this is the case of general shear failure. Okay. So, next is uh, local shear failure. Uh, here, the load is equal to certain value of QU. That is, uh, for particular load, the failure occurs. The foundation movement is accompanied by sudden jerk. The failure surface gradually extends outwards from the foundation. That is, this is the case of local shear failure. And here the plastic zones are not clear cut defined as in the general shear failure. Okay. Here a triangular wedge shaped zone uh, uh, below the uh, footy moves downwards. Okay. And uh, but unlike general shear failure, the slip surface ends uh, some uh, sometimes inside the uh, soil. The slip surface or the failure surface not uh, comes outward the ground level. Okay. That is the case. Local shear failure means but uh, uh, that uh, here the slip surface and somewhere inside the soil. But however, some signs of uh, small uh, soil bulging are seen. There will be a small uh, soil bulging on the ground level and it usually occurs in loose to medium sand with relative density between 35 to 70 percentage and on soft clays. Okay. That is uh, the general shear failure occurs uh, for uh, stiff clays and uh, uh, sand with relative density greater than 70 percentage and here it occurs to occurs for loose to medium sand with relative density between 35 to 70 percentage and in soft clays so this is local shear failure the shear strength of the soil is not fully mobilized and hence failure planes are not uh, well defined as in the case of uh, uh, general shear failure okay the failure occurs at a very large vertical strain strain and small lateral strain so this is local shear failure and the last one punching shear failure. so last one is punching shear failure here uh, the loaded base sinks into the soil punch that is here the foundation penetrate into the soil without any bulging of the surface that is the failure surface never reaches the ground surface failure uh, ends within the uh, soil uh, soil and here this type of uh, failure occurs in relatively loose sand with relative density less than 35 percentage okay so this is a punching shear failure that is the loading base sinks uh, into the soil like a punch and the failure surface do not extend up to the ground surface so there is no heave is observed on the ground level and the large vertical strains are involved with practically no lateral deformation so here failure planes are difficult to locate uh, because in because in the case of uh, local or uh, general shear failure 
the sound sound 2 and 3 are clear cutly defined but in the case of punching shear failure these sounds are not well defined because here foundation uh, penetrate in the soil without any bulging and failure surface never reaches the ground surface and it occurs with uh, uh, sand with relative density less than 35 percentage so these are the different types of uh, soil failure that is general local and punching shear failure and general shear fail occurs with the sand uh, relative density greater than 70 percentage and in stiff clays then local shear fail occurs for sand uh, with relative density between 35 to 70 percentage and in uh, soft clays then punching shear fail occurs for, for sand with relative density less than 35 percentage okay so these are the bearing capacity failures uh, so you should read the textbook and if you have any doubt please uh, contact me okay thank you